Welcome back to Alien Restomod. It's been a while, and it's I've been doing other things other than working on the Camaro, of course. But you had to take care of business. First thing I want to do is shout out to all the new subs. I appreciate you guys for subscribing, and I hope I can produce some uh, informative content to help you with your project. But remember, don't try anything that's at home. It is dangerous, and you can't get hurt. There's your safety tip for the day. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to install a Champion cooling system, a radiator. Here's a part number. It's Charlie Charlie 370 Bravo. Got it through Amazon. Check it out. It was in my budget. That's why I got it. Radiator comes with an internal cooling system for your or a trans cooler, which was great because I was worried about getting another one. But uh, it is three rows. Comes with a shroud. It's all aluminum. The shroud has like a protective coating on it. And it fits nice and tight. Hopefully I don't do this wrong. Yep, there we go. You have to use self-piercing um, screws. Connect there, there, and there. Also comes with two 10-inch fans. There's four holes you need to line up and drill. You know, wherever you want to put the wire, wherever it's up, down, left, right, whatever. That's up to you. But there's four holes. That's not one of them. There, there, and there. You just mark it and you got to drill it. Not on the radiator, of course. Anyways, let's go over the agenda of what we're going to do today. All right, sequence sequence of events. We're going to remove the old radiator. I'm pretty sure I already drained it. We're going to finish the transmission hard line. We're going to install the fans on the shroud. Then we're going to take the shroud and install that on the radiator. Then take the all that, put it on the radiator support, and then on the subframe. Hook up the wires, and then connect the transmission cooler lines. And we should be done. That's easy. Should be like 10 minutes. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started. All right, like I said, it came with an internal transmission cooler. I've already installed this one right here. Um, why is it curved? Well, basically, I just grabbed whatever I had in my uh, AN6 fitting bag of goodies. I've had this lying around for a while. Anyways, uh, if you go onto Amazon, they're going to suggest this. Uh, they're going to suggest a AN6 transmission line fitting 551114. And that's what this was. And this thing is way too big. As you can see, it barely got on there. Attached like three threads and that was it. Just doesn't fit. Oh, now it's calling me a liar. No, wait. Now it stops. So it just doesn't look right. So I went to a smaller thread. I don't know what the thread was. I pulled it out of my bag. Start feeling around. Found something that fit. Came out with this. Anyways, just to make sure that it was nice and tight. I put an O-ring on there. And I put uh, pl uh, yeah, plumber's tape on there, basically. And it fits fine.
so far what we've done, we've mounted the fans to the shroud and the shroud to the radiator. Now we've uh, I've already started this side, of course, for the radiator to the subframe, uh, the radiator support. And all you use is, if you have a 69 Camaro, you're using the exact same bolts to mount it. I, I went out and bought extra uh, bolts from Lowe's. Actually, Lowe's uh, hardware store actually has an automotive section. You look at all the nuts and bolts, they have an automotive section. You can get a lot of these um, uh, bolts that you need and uh, gaskets and stuff like that from right there. Or uh, not gaskets, but uh, O-rings and stuff like that. Uh, way cheaper than going through dealership or whatever. But uh, I did one side and I just have to do the other side. And I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, the radiator is attached to the um, radiator support frame. Like again, uh, it's just two on this side and then two over here. I think one was supposed to go down here, but I don't know how to hook it up because there's a piece behind it. Anyways, attached it there and then up there. Uh, what I used on the fans and the uh, shroud connect connected to the radiator, I'm hoping there's nothing in me here, but that's the only way you can... Uh, Attach it is to screw something through this piece and all I used was number eight half-inch uh, Self-piercing screws yeah, it worked out Everything seems pretty tight So <clears throat> Man, I screwed up I'll Let you know I was tightening this You saw me tightening the video and then I cut it off and I realized I was tightening it sideways for some reason I screwed up the threads in there. So now I gotta order another one of these. Anyways, uh, next up is to mount this to the subframe. Now, I went out and bought these, uh, this uh, radiator support um, bushing set from Energy Suspension. And according to their schematic, this is how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna try and do, th I'm gonna try and do this with one hand. And I'm not insulting your intelligence, if you already know how to do this, skip through it and go to the end, whatever. But um, somebody might not know how to do it. Okay, according to what they suggest doing, this piece right here goes underneath. This is going to go on top. Of course, the bolt's going to go through. So you got washer, bolt, top bushing, and the bottom bushing. Bottom bushing has a, a metal piece in the middle. And then this is going to sit... So that sandwiches in between the sub radiator support and then neck underneath this is it's going to sit on top of the subframe. So it's going to sit right there. Underneath here, what you're going to do is you're going to come up underneath. You're going to put on the washer, lock washer, and the nut. So, so that's how it goes. All right, there's a close-up view of the, the sandwiching effect <laughs> of the, uh, the bushings. Like I said, uh, the subframe doesn't have a bushing underneath. You just put up the washer, the lock washer, and the nut, and you're done. I don't know what the, you know, um, torque specs are on this. I just torqued it down as far as I could right now, and I'll deal with it later. But I did the other side, and that's done. Now let's talk about wiring. Like I said, I don't know. I have a connector for this. I mean, you can go out and find them. I can go to the junkyard and probably find them, but I didn't want to waste the gas because it's so expensive. <laughs> I should be making an electric vehicle. But anyways, um, so what I did is I just hooked up uh, the, the hot wire and the ground. I got the ground going to the engine. And I will cover this up so it didn't get... All messed up uh, with the elements. I will tape it up. I did the same thing for the other one. Grounded it, and I hooked up the red hot wire. And that's all you do on the on the wiring. Um, the hoses that I do have do not fit from here to here, and from here to over there. They're uh, they're too long, so I have to get more uh, different size and 
I'm going to run over to AutoZone and check that out. But I noticed one thing. Look at the distance I have. I want to put a cold air intake on this. That's not going to work. So this is going to have to come off or be shorter. I don't know. I will have to wait and see. But let me go get that other stuff and from there. Hey, before I run off to AutoZone and get all those stuff, all that stuff, um, oh. if you can see, I use a pointy device. This is a brass connector. These are the three eight um, aluminum, uh, or actually, this is a three eight steel, um, I guess, screw, whatever. Um, and the line is three eight aluminum. So what I did is initially made. Uh, the lines to come out to this point and then I put these connectors on there because I knew it would be really hard to attach those to your transmission so I did that first and it worked out because it was easier to um, add these these lines in all I did was use plumbers tape on there and they screwed right in I got it all from AutoZone now the um, aluminum uh, tubing I got online it wasn't that bad I got it from Amazon, 25 foot for whatever. And I used it for other things too, but um, easy to bend and it worked out. I used all those A and, A and 6 fittings and put them on the end. I know it looks, it looks weird, but uh, it'll work out where the red tube is. Right there, it goes on the end of the uh, your transmission line. And then it'll screw on. I'll show you that in a second. And there's the bottom one. I'm going to go with what I already have and what I already have for the flexible transmission line is 3 8 low emissions fuel injected uh, line. All I need is one more foot of this. I already have this, so I'll use that. What I'm talking about this is take this, you screw it on best you can. It barely fits, which is good. Anyways, I don't want to do it right now. And then, then you screw on this, and this part goes inside the tube, and that makes pressure, and it'll, it'll hold. Then you just screw it on. Screw it on nice and tight. But I gotta get by another one of these, by the way. So I only need one more foot of this and I'm good to go. So all right, freshly back from AutoZone a day later. Um hey, just a real quick note. All the hard line for the transmission, uh the aluminum tubing, uh the, the right size for that uh steel nut that I had, it's a five eighths by 18 inverted thread size and it's for a 3 8 tubing just for an FYI there's the part number and that is at Amazon or Auto, AutoZone anyways uh, everything came in I had a piece of braided fuel line and I went ahead and used it I got rubber on one and braided on the other we'll see who, who leaks first or not leak <laughs> which is uh, hopeful uh, I just didn't want to spend any more money. This thing is so expensive. But um, everything worked out. Uh, all the wires are uh, in place. Trying to get them over here so we can uh, put them in loom. But I'm not going to test it right now. I still have to fill it. That'll be another day. I'm going to uh, put a fork in it and call this one done for now. Until I get to that point where I can start it again. And then I will... Uh, fill the radiator up and test it out. I did pick up some uh, radiator hose. It's not really uh, for this application. It just that I took a coat hanger and cut it and made my own and that I took it down there and they just matched up the coat hanger to what I had and uh, it, it worked out. I had to cut this one but this one right up here it's it's good enough. It does stick up a little bit. I have to work around the cold air intake but I'll you know deal with that when I get to it but anyways that's it for now I, I'm really pleased with it uh, it went together pretty well <laughs> we'll see how it works out when we uh, we started again so thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time on Alien Rest of My Garage <laughs>